it's time for another video. And you know, you're going to say to yourself, that guy is talking 150 miles an hour. The reason why is I have such limited time and I have so many questions and so many videos to shoot. I'm trying to buzz through these very quickly. So forgive me. I'm Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com. This is episode number 180. And the highlighted item for this is, take a guess what it is. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex brain. <laughs> the brain. It is item 3037. It is a replica of the brain of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It retails for $12. Um, it's a very interesting piece, especially if you're a teacher. When people say some, you know, dinosaur's brain is the size of a walnut. Yes, Stegosaurus has a small brain, but other dinosaurs' brains weren't that tiny. So here's an example. And this brain doesn't even include all of the inner ear canals and all the other things that, that are associated with it. It makes it look even bigger. This is actually a relatively small version of the brain. But it is something really cool and it's a neat piece if you want to add it to your collection. All right, here we go. Matthew from Sydney, Australia. Hey, DG, me again. I want to make this short. So is T-Rex still smaller than Spinosaurus or is the T-Rex now larger? Well, Matthew, from what I understand, it's still Spinosaurus is still considered longer, and if you include the sail, taller, but not more massive. Tyrannosaurus is simply a much bigger, more power, well, bigger, much more powerful dinosaur than Spinosaurus. So again, it's like comparing a giraffe and an elephant. Yes, a giraffe may be taller, but an elephant has got the mass. That's my opinion about Tyrannosaurus and Spinosaurus. Spino can be the giraffe, but Tyrannosaurus is the elephant. All right, Jens from Hyo, Sweden. I think it's pronounced Hyo. It's H-J-O. So is it Hyo? Hi, Joe. I, I bet it's Hyo, Sweden. Hey, DG, how are you? I'm doing good, Jens. My question is, who would win in a fight between a Mosasaur and a Dinosuchus? Well, Dinosuchus and Tylosaurus, they lived at the same time, same place. Maybe they came in contact with each other. The deal is that Dinosuchus' outer skin is built like armor. Uh, there's no evidence to support Mosasaurus had anything other than soft skin. One bite from something as big as a Dinosuchus would have dispatched uh, Mosasaur very quickly. Now, Mosasaurs probably were much more agile because of their body shape. I bet you they would have zipped around much faster and they would have been, uh, they would have been much more agile, making them much more harder to catch. Uh, whereas that crocodile is not going to have many moves. His moves are not chasing things underwater. His moves are lying in wait and launching himself out of the water. So his body is relatively stiff and rigid. So if Dinosuchus could ever get his mouth on him, that'd be the end of it. But I don't think he'd ever catch him. All right, Luigi from the Philippines. Hi, DG. I hope you're doing well. Uh, and I hope the weather there is, isn't as unpredictable as here. Uh, Luigi, you guys do get some crazy weather in the Philippines. I worry about you all the time. I watch the Weather Channel, and every time it seems like your country is constantly being hit. But you know what? Your residual people, your 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 resilient residual, your resilient people, and I know you guys can deal with anything. Our weather in Texas is a little unpredictable, but it usually doesn't last as long. Okay, here's just questions. I strongly believe that dromaeosauruses were semi-arboreal. That means living in trees. Nice one. And that they launched themselves from rock ledges and trees in order to attack large prey from above. I think this very well explains their bird-like anatomy and the functions of the sickle claw. Do you think my hypothesis is plausible? Thank you for taking time to answer our questions and have a great and wonderful day. Thank you, Luigi. Do I think it's plausible? Of course it is. I think any time a predator can take advantage of higher ground gives it an advantage over the prey that it's hunting, especially if the prey is larger and you can land on its back. Because some of those big hadrosaurs, you land on their back, there's nothing they can do other than roll over on their side and try to crush you, but then they run the risk of breaking their legs. So the reason why I, I've never thought that that sickle claw was functional for climbing is it's too thin and blade-like. It is made for slicing. If you're going to use it for grasping and climbing, I don't think it would be as narrow at the tip or as, or as pointy at the tip or as narrow at the cross section. I think it'd be a little bit like the cleats on a boot that are used to climb a telephone pole. They don't use razor sharp curved spiky things. They use spikes. So I, I don't know if they use them for that, but here's the other problem. 
If you become specialized where you climb a tree and you wait for the prey, what are the chances that the prey will walk by the spot you happen to pick? Now, certainly there would have been trails just like they are today, but I don't think it's plausible for those dinosaurs to spend the day sitting in a tree waiting for something to walk underneath it. Luigi, you see what I, you see what I mean? I think they're active hunters. They're fast. So I think they're using speed as their number one method of hunting. But I do believe that you're right. If they had the ability to attack from above, they would take advantage. Okay. Uh, Dennis from Inglewood, New Jersey. Out of curiosity, do you think Allosaurus may have hunted in packs and both parents care for the chicks? And do you think Saurophaganax is just a larger species of Allosaurus? Dennis, good question. Um, I do believe Allosaurus hunted in packs. Now, whether that pack was made up of mom and dad and junior, I don't know so much if the males participated. See, some people say, well, the male bird species generally don't participate in the hunt. That's not true. Uh, there's some hawks where they hunt uh, cooperatively. Also, you look at other animals like geese and swans and those kind of animals, they stay together for life. So it may be possible that they inherited that behavior from predecessors like Allosaurus. Um, I do think it's beneficial to hunt in a group. So I do think they hunted in the group. I don't necessarily know if both parents participated in the child rearing. My best guess would be maybe it's a couple of large females that hunt together. And then when they give birth or when they have lay their eggs, they are probably leaving the group and tending to them themselves. But then as they get older, they come back and join the, the, the hunting group again. Maybe it's all speculation. Do I think Saurophaganax is just a larger subspecies of Allosaurus? It's definitely an Allosaurid. And I had commented in an earlier uh, video we shot today that Dr. Bacher, Robert Bacher and I were having a conversation and he was saying that he felt Saurophaganax was clearly its own distinctive species. Now, I don't know if he still feels that way or not because that was 15 years ago, but as well, longer than that. It's been, my gosh, yeah, it's been almost 18 years ago. But uh, anyway, I think it's its own species. Okay, Mitch from Newcastle, Australia. Hey there, DG. Hope all is well with you. It is, buddy. I have a quick question about the classification of Sarcosuchus. In documentaries and news, etc., Sarcosuchus is said to be a prehistoric crocodile. But when I've studied the classifi classification, it says that it's not, in fact, a member of the crocodilians, but a close relative of them. I understand that it definitely looks like a crocodile, but why would a documentary or news article give out false information like that? I hope that this question isn't too hard to answer, and I wish you the best for future for your future, DG. Thank you, Mitch. What a kind thing to say. Okay, Mitch, here's the thing you learned very quickly. Science is less important than uh, entertainment when it comes to television. The, the powers that be in television want something entertaining, but they also want something that's easy to understand for the average viewer. So when they say Sarcosuchus is a giant crocodile in a documentary, that is because 99.5% of everybody watching that show would not understand if you said it wasn't a crocodile. Because then you'd have to spend a lot of the show explaining why it's not. And that means you get into very in-detailed science. And that, unfortunately, is when a show loses its audience. The audience just doesn't want to know those things. So Sarcosuchus looks like a giant crocodile. The public, the general public, knows what a crocodile is. And it's easy for them to then understand that that thing is a giant crocodile. Even though people like you and I and, and people in the paleo community all scream, that's not a crocodile. It's an unfortunate part of it. But... If they made a show that spent a lot of time explaining why it's not a crocodile, I suspect the powers that be think that most people would click, tune out, and move on to something else. Because when you say that's a crocodile, I get it. When you say it looks exactly like a crocodile, but here's why it's not, change the channel. And that's the, that's the answer, my friend. Okay, finally, um, is it Sajad or Sahad? It's S-A-J-J-A-D, S-A-J-J-A-D, Sajad. I'm guessing it's Sajad. If it's not, my friend, please don't take offense to you guys when I mispronounce names. I am terrible at pronunciation. Okay, he is from... Uh 
Katif, Saudi Arabia. Hey, DG, how are you doing? Good, buddy. How are you? Thank you for answering my first question. Happy to do it. I'm glad you got your question answered. My second question is, how would dinosaurs interact with modern animals if they hadn't have died out? Would they be able to survive? Can carnivores be able to hunt the more advanced mammals? Wow! Okay, let's say the extinction never occurred and dinosaurs are propelled into today and here they're living here today with modern animals. Well, I think they would each find a special niche. Okay, that means somebody either just beamed onto the set or that's the way my phone makes a sound when I get an email. Anyway, yes, it's from Star Trek. Ha <laughs> ha, okay. Um, I think they would have found their niche within each environment and ha absolutely figured out how to interact and hunt with the animals today. You see, you think of mammals being advanced and they are, but think about this. The Komodo dragon and all reptiles for that matter have no problem killing mammalian prey. And yet reptiles today are much slower more cold-blooded than the dinosaurs. So if reptiles today are able to find mammalian prey, I will bet you dinosaurs would have done the exact same thing. All right, you guys, great to see you all. I didn't see any of you, but I'm just saying that to make you feel as one. Come on, group hug, everybody get in here. Come on, get in here. There's room, okay. Um, if you have a question, <laughs> your question might be, do you need mental help? If you have a question, go to my website. <laughs> I'm getting a little punchy. I've shot about eight videos in this last 45 minutes and I'm starting to get worn out. So if you have a question, go to my website, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, send me your questions and I'll do my best to answer. Until next time, take care everybody and I'll see you soon.